Hello everyone. Now I remember when I was a sophomore in high school, in my music class, one of my classmates said he hated some song. I don't remember what song he was referring to, he just said he hated some song. And the teacher told him, I don't want to hear you say you hate any kind of music. But you're already like, dude, he has the freedom of speech, what are you talking about? But like, people that are experts and love movies aren't going to love every freaking movie. And people that are experts and love video games are not going to love every freaking video game. What's music's excuse? How is music any different in that regard? There are songs in this world that if my music teacher had heard them, she would not like them. If not, she already has heard some songs that she didn't like. More than likely. Yeah, so I've always wondered that she was kind of being a hypocrite in that regard, right? But then I got me thinking. Maybe she's right. Because, well, to put it simply, yes, the kid does have a freedom of speech, but the opinion factor on music is actually a bit different than video games or movies. It's gonna be a hard episode to explain, but I'll try my best. If you ask me, movies and video games are more prone to mistakes than music is. You're probably saying, no, they are not. It takes a lot of time and practice to do any of those things. Movies, video games, music. You gotta learn the crap before you can make a good one of any of those. And I, I'm sure somebody has, in fact, no, I'm certain somebody has slipped up on a guitar string before. I'm sure somebody has pressed the wrong key on the keyboard before. So yes, okay, there have been mistakes in making songs. I'm sure it's happened before. But like, when it comes to writing a song, even one mistake, the whole song can fall apart. You see, when they make movies and video games, they're gonna have mistakes and flaws in them. Because it's not possible to be perfect when it comes to those. When you're controlling a video game, there's gotta be some parts of the game that aren't as fun as other parts, and there's gotta be something that you're not gonna enjoy about it. If you remember episode 69, The Legend of Zilch, I talked about Ocarina of Time, and how I tried to point out all the flaws I could in that game, despite it being my favorite game ever, it's fantastic. Even that is not perfect. Now let's go on to movies. Can movies have flaws? Can movies have mistakes? Well yeah, CinemaSins has proved that. There's plot holes and technical animation errors. But when it comes to music though, well for one thing, your experience with one song is going to be shorter than one movie or one video game. I'm sure. Unless it's like a simple Atari game. But that's not the point. The song is usually like three, four, five minutes long or something like that. It's pretty gosh darn short, and that's probably a good thing because you're gonna wear yourself out if you make it too long, and the song is not gonna be very engaging if it's too long. But does anybody ever just sit down and write reviews of songs? Does anybody ever just recommend you listen to a song because, oh, I liked um, the way he said that one line or this one rhyme in the song was very clever? No, nobody does that. I mean, maybe some weirdo does. but. It's not the same. Like, video games and movies, you can be like, oh, I love that one part in that movie, it's very funny. Or I like this one part of the game, it's really fun, it's really challenging. But when it comes to a song, though, no, it's, it's just a song. It's just sounds to your ears, it makes you want to jam out, and it connects with your brain. So, really, the opinion factor when it comes to music is stronger than when it comes to movies or video games. In the end, it's all opinions, but when it comes to songs, though, it's even more so opinion. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, somebody might not like a certain song because of the words that are in the song. I really love the song, uh, what was it? Janie's Got a Gun by Aerosmith. Despite the fact that the lyrics are kind of violent, the instrumentals are kick-ass. Like, holy crap, I couldn't care less about what they're saying in the song, I just love the music. But somebody might like the music as well, but not like the song at all because of what they're saying. And sometimes lyrics do murder a song by themselves. I guess technically it could be the opposite too. Like, if it has really good lyrics, but the music is kind of sucky, the instrumental part. I don't care for the song Me, Myself, and I by, I forgot who it was, g Easy and some other person, I don't know. Look, I'm sure the writing is clever, like it rhymes and stuff. But, the instrumentals in that song I don't care for. Or, this might even be a better example, but rap songs. There are good rap songs out there, but like, 
the instrumentals can be kind of off and not on the par with the lyrics. You know what I mean? It is possible to have a song without any lyrics, but it's not really possible to have a song without any instrumentals. Like, imagine if you just heard lyrics, but no instrumentals. So you can hear instrumentals without lyrics, but lyrics without instrumentals? That's not a song. You can kind of sing to a song like, what, what should I sing to? I have no song on my head right now. But basically, if I just sang a song with its lyrics right now, but you didn't have the instrumentals, you would still be able to tell me the song, but you probably aren't going to hear that song in your head. I mean, you might, but but you would much rather just hear the song than hear me sing, the, or not even sing, just say the lyrics of the song. You know what I mean? So in conclusion, an imperfect song, I don't think that's possible because even just one small slip up and it could ruin the whole song. Again, obviously, with the software we have these days, we can just redo it. Back in the old days, we had to be perfect, or as perfect as possible at least, and even then, it, we probably didn't have it all the time. But when we were playing out an opera and playing those violins, we can't actually record it. But now that we can record it, we can tweak it and make it sound really good. And besides, it's really short anyway, so it's like... Why not make it sound perfect? Why would there be a slip up in there? You could always just take that out. It's only like a four minute song. You really don't have time in your life to go through the whole song and take out anything you need to? Come on. With that said, I conclude. I don't know it and I don't think there's any such thing as an imperfect song. Because the whole thing has to connect together just like all the gears in a clock have to connect together properly. And if just one is off, the whole thing doesn't work. Well, folks, that was this episode, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.